Hi everybody. It's my watering day today and I wanted you guys to join me so I can uh, maybe say a few things that I might have changed over the years and show you a few hints. So uh, I already started and these ones here they have been uh, they have been soaked and I soaked them 10 minutes and what I have done is all the ones on this side have spikes. In fact, there's a couple with two spikes. I'm so happy. And I think part of the reason is I was using, I'm not selling anything, but I was using the 101510 liquid. And I don't know um, what difference it would make, but you definitely want this higher number a high middle number for encouraging your flower spikes. But the other two numbers are fairly high too, so it's also giving them good nutrition. But um, one video some time back, I said, oh, look what I got at a garage sale. I picked it up and asked the lady how much it was, and I guess her mother loved orchids and she passed away. And she says, oh, you can have it. And it was pretty full. And I used it. And I'm really happy with it. And this one is 19.31.17. And it is little crystals. And it comes with a little scoop like this. So um, the directions say to use a half a scoop for, um, let's see, add a half a scoop for 2.5 liters of lukewarm water. Well, I am not very scientific. I am not a math expert, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> but I sat down at lunchtime with Jack and I said, you know, we got it. I know I was doing it weak because I was just putting a pinch in um, of this in four gallons of water. So we figured it out and um, one scoop does 20 cups. And my sink holds four to five gallons of water because I took a gallon jug and I filled up the sink with that. So, um, uh, what did I say? Oh boy. Um, so, four gallons is 60 cups. <laughs> so anyway, that means I am really safe. I am less than a quarter. So what I did, I used, this is a quarter teaspoon if you, uh, um, they say scoop, but when I looked it said a quarter of a teaspoon of Schultz. So I put in one whole scoop in four gallons of water because you should use uh, a quarter of what they say to use or less. Or lots of times I go on the left side and this is definitely on the left side, but a little more than I've been using. So, um, I've already done some. I'm going to stick some more in the sink and I just want to show you what I do when I'm watering. So I'll take my orchid and this one has a tiny little spike coming in there. Where are you? Let me see. Right in there. Yeah, there. So um, I'm going to what I do first is I just turn the tap on lightly because what happens is those roots actually absorb quite a bit of water in the first few minutes. So you don't want to soak it too much, but you want to soak it enough so that when you put it in the fertilizer solution, you don't burn them. In other words, they're getting a slight covering, but they're not filling up with all the water they're going to hold. So. I take it and I just make sure I'm moisting down and sometimes if there's lots of leaves I'll pick it up and I got warm water here and I'm just making sure especially the roots on the surface have had a good rinse and once I've done that I usually hold it for a few minutes 
And then, because the water's deep for some and not for others, I sometimes put a little saucer underneath, and then I stick it in, and sometimes the bark will come out and float. Now, and we'll get another one. Spike coming in here on this one. And so we're going to have so much fun this winter. Makes you almost look forward to winter coming. So then I will rinse it over because you have to remember to cover all the bark. Even if you water with a jug, bark does not wick. In other words, if you leave a dry area on your bark, if you're using a watering can, you're not getting the whole surface of water isn't going right down. There's going to be two dry spots inside. That's why soaking is actually the best idea. So I'm going to put another saucer under that one. It's been rinsed. And we'll, put, we'll fill up the sink because then I want to show you some other things. And there's a spike coming. This one's kind of funny to see because it's behind an aerial root. But it's in there. This was... Uh, Lemon surprise. I really love the color of this one. So, lukewarm water. You don't want to chop it with cold water. A good rinse, making sure you get the aerial root. And then, in for a soak. And I got room for one more small one. I've done, I've done my uh, palfit, slipper orchids. <laughs> Okay, we'll do this one. This is one that struggled a long time and I repotted it a few times and it's very hard to see, but there is a tiny little spike coming in there. So, uh, there. Now I've water been watering once a week, but with my smaller pots, even in the house and even in the winter, with my smaller pots, uh, I will sometimes dump them out. Okay, first we better timer. I am hopeless. So what I do is I time them 10 minutes and this will go off in 10 minutes while we're doing something else. I always do because I'm always doing something. <laughs> so you notice I have some little... Do you know we're getting a fall, a beautiful fall. We have a week of nice summer weather coming and actually I went out in the garden and there was some lavender just growing there was a beautiful bee on it too so I thought oh mm, I have to bring that in and uh, that's another last time I had the wire the wire uh, thing for some plants but this one because the stems are so small I have you can probably find these anywhere. I pick them up at sales, but it's just a, it's a little plastic thing that you can stick in any dish and it has a little suction. It holds on and you can put little flowers in almost anything. So, and they come in different sizes too. There's a big one because I like to have flowers when they're out. I like them on the table. I just is how I am. So there is many different kinds. They're very handy. They may sell them online. I don't know. They could be almost, they're called uh, flower fashion. Fashioner. Flower fashioner. So I don't know. Uh, buy. There's the name there. Buy. Yeah, so they're handy. So if you're a person that likes to put flowers out in the house, it's always nice to have things to make it easier. So that, and the next thing is, now, this is a little orchid that I have repotted twice in the past. It's one I got not too long ago, I think just before Mother's Day, and it had scale really bad. And I had chained the media twice. I the poor thing suffered and suffered and suffered. And it came in with scale. And you have to be careful. If you get an orchid with scale, it'll go through everything. And then you're really having to keep them off. If I see them 
on my leaf. Sometimes I might see one and I will take a little bit of a little bit of not the hydrogen peroxide but oh there it is. A little bit of alcohol and a little pad like this and uh, just wet it and wipe the leaves. Now I like to wipe them if there's scale on them but uh, I don't like to <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to um, leave that alcohol sitting on that leaf so usually after I've used it or if it's so bad you want to spray your roots after I've used it I usually mist down with water too and for for uh, uh, it must have been almost a month I, this, this thing just got alcohol bath after alcohol bath so um, I'm going to dump it out of this pot. It's been a week since it's been watered, so it's going to look dry. And I want to show you some things. So, maybe if I sit it there. Okay, here we go. It's dry. Okay. There's a little bit of charcoal, a little bit of bark, and a little bit of... Um, uh, mortar from bricks. Okay, now before I soak this, I'm going to show it to you. You may look shocked, but I want to point a few things out. Now, it's it's getting a new leaf, and that new leaf is quite happy. But and and is getting it now. Notice the color of the new roots. They're nice and green. Those are the ones that are keeping this plant. And quite often what happens is you buy your orchid your and it doesn't matter if you're changing from uh, bark to moss or moss to bark. The roots are going to take a shock and you're going to lose some. So when you go back to look at the roots and don't be afraid to, um, you're going to see <laughs> maybe better to see dry shriveled, you know, shriveled up roots than to see muggy, messy, soggy ones. So, okay, I'm going to soak it after and we'll see the difference how it looks after it's soaked. But you can see these are very dry. You can see the inner core of the root where I had taken it out of the moss and pulled that off. And uh, these are very dry. But they're never going to rot because they're in bark. They're old, they suffered, but what are we waiting for? The reason it's going new, new leaf is it's got some beautiful roots. And don't worry if these are dry because if you're in bark and you're watering once or even twice a week for a small pot, don't worry. You can clean them up if you want. Now I'm going to soak this. Um, Highness, let me see. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm going to soak this while we uh, discuss a couple other things and then show you what I do when I take the water out. So we're going to um, give it a good rinse first. I don't want to encourage this one to spike. Oh, a friend has arrived. Well, 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 <laughs> it is everybody's lucky day. <laughs> anyway, we're going to let this soak in here, like so, and we'll see how it looks. And uh, then I'll just repot it in the bark again. But it's good to check, know what's happening, because if you want to know the most uh, often reason for your orchids dying is too much water. Now this was definitely not too much water. And did you notice the leaves look happy? It's got new roots. The other roots are the old roots that were in the moss that shocked because they were changing media. Okay, so let's just soak that over there before I put in. So inside my media, this is it. And this poor thing got bathed in, in alcohol and uh, uh, got pot changed twice and it was really in shock. So it was covered in scale. I had to continually 
rinse it off. I didn't think I'd save it, but it's going to make it. And uh, so this is the, this is what was in the mix. It's uh, coarse bark. I have medium outside now. I haven't started using. And uh, a little bit of charcoal, not much. I have trouble finding size I like. So let's put that there. Now, this is an old brick. And uh, I read in these books, I love them, I want to get a couple more, I've only got two of his. He's passed away, he was a orchid specialist and, and he was never schooled, trained, scientific, but learned everything he did from doing it. And in the end he wrote tons of books and uh, people really respected him. But um, Paphiopedalums are slipper orchids. I just want to just read you what he says. They should be grown in much smaller pots and additions of old mortar or some form of slowly soluble limestone derivatives seem to promote healthier growth and flowering. Dolomite or shell grit is far too slow and the potting material is frequently discarded in repotting before any beneficial breakdown occurs. Free lime sprinkled on the top of potting material and watered through seems to fulfill a useful function and plants treated in this way, provided the mix is congenial in the first place, benefit from it. So that's why I started, uh, we break it all up to a, a, a crumbly, crumbly, not quite powder, but just before that. And I've been sprinkling a little bit on the surface, maybe once every three months, of all of my pots. And it gets watered through. Uh, three, four months, once is probably enough. So that's something else I've been doing, but very good reading material. Um, I don't have one on fells. I have to find one he did on fells. But anyway, excellent reading material. I really very scientific and I'm not. So I'll just put those. Up. Okay, now that we will see our guest in a minute <laughs> because we have to take these out of here and I'll show you what I do. So um, lots of times you might have some some bark floating around. That's okay. So I just take them out And I'll have to take, these ones were done earlier, so I will put the bark back where it's needed. You know, sometimes, if you've, you're washing, you've watered your orchids, and you find they're not sitting quite right in your pot, and you want to maybe, maybe they're sitting too deep, um, this one's a little deep. Sometimes, I don't want to play with it because it's, it's spiking, but... Sometimes you can grab it by its core and just wiggle it a little bit like that. And then you can take your finger and push some of the bark down in there and you can actually straighten them up if they've been a little bent and you can actually raise them if they're a little too low. So, there's another little thing. Okay, now before I get on with watering, I have to go get our guest. Okay. All right, everybody. Here's our guest. <laughs> now, if you've ever been on a yard tour with me, you'll know um, I have some little things through the yard that I painted. Anyway, we were at the thrift store, and in this little beaver, hey, Canada beavers, we have beavers. They're not green either. So anyway, it's a nice big tail, and he's green. I will be painting him. But the reason he was only $2, and he's solar, he, uh, this lights up. So his hand, he didn't have a hand. So Jack has uh, made this little lantern, and there's the lamp that was with it. 
and he made it so it hooked on. He made him a new little paw. So now he's ready to paint. And he's going to be so cute by the pond outside. So that's our little visit from a stranger today. <laughs> Let me put him back. You know, I have fun in the strangest ways, but I, <laughs> I have fun talking to you guys too and trying to see if I can share something that I've learned. And the last thing before we go is you get yourself these, you can get them at a dollar store. You can get a whole package for a dollar and a quarter here at that, uh, I don't know, it's a tree dollar store, dollar tree, that's what it is. So then, as you know, there is a minimum of amount of fertilizer in my water. So take this little pad and wet it. And then you can wipe off all your leaves, even the bottom, because there's a little bit of fertilizer on that, and it will clean them off, and you can do it with a dry one after, but, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of things people do for shiny leaves. Even people that go to sh orchid shows. Um, mayonnaise, that's what they use, mayonnaise, and uh, lemon juice but you know what this it's just good it's good for their leaves good for them it's not leaving anything greasy for dust to settle in and uh, anyway so I do that and then afterwards just a paper towel to make sure there's no um, moisture I'll take a little piece of paper towel and I'll make a point at it I used to use Q-tips, didn't find they were working, and I just go into the point just to make sure there's nothing left inside the thing. And if your orchids sit nice and high in bark, you're not going to have to uh, worry about rot either. Not going half and rot and bark. So, <laughs> thanks for joining me. <laughs> and uh, I so enjoy it. I love ants, or you know what? It's I wasn't I did not like school. I graduated, but I never really liked school, and uh, I was good in uh, art and sewing and home ec and and everything, but uh, slow, slow at reading and stuff. And it's my brother's fault because he was a year older than me, and he used to sit and read me all his books. Well. I thought he was looking at the pictures, so when I was supposed to be getting out of grade one, they gave me a book I hadn't seen. My brother had never read me, so uh, I couldn't read it because I had memorized from all the times he had read me his stories that I'd look at the little picture about Jane and Spot and everything. <laughs> I didn't have to read underneath. He read it to me so darn many times I had the books memorized. One book, one book, I had them all memorized. And they never found out. And they passed me on trial out of grade one and they said that I had to learn to read, you know. <laughs> they probably should never pass me on trial because it slowed me down. And, uh, but anyway, I passed, you know, with above average marks, but I always enjoyed the other subjects <laughs> more. So that, that's, that's what happened to me anyways, and that's my excuse. <laughs> so that's why I have trouble figuring out all this. Uh, I, that's why I'm not scientific. And, uh, and the funny thing is, um, you know, we used to have to write subjective stories. And then there was a question part. So on the questions of exams, I'd do, you know, C minus C. And then they, they, you'd have to write a story or something. Oh, I'd get A or B. I could memorize my whole social studies book. <laughs> anyway, that's just one more fact about me. And we're just a little closer than we were yesterday. So um, thanks for visiting. And thanks for visiting me to chat. Because... One thing I did learn, I was the best typist in the whole high school. Well, third best, sorry, third best. 
Okay, see ya. <laughs>